This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host on Cold Medicine, Cami Chaos. As always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, I am not on Cold Medicine tonight. <laughs> and this week's special After Hours guest is Aaron Hockley. Also, no Cold Medicine. And in case you couldn't tell, we have a live studio audience this evening. Everybody say hello to Verso and Media Chick. Hello, Verso and Media Chick. Hi. And tonight, on a special edition of Strange Love Live After Hours, everyone will profess their great love for Barack Obama! Yeah! <laughs> Aaron Hockley, you go first. <laughs> uh, yay, Barack! Yeah, sing so, it, brother. So, yeah, no. Oh, oh, that's a good point. Would you rather take off your shirt or profess your love for Barack Obama? Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough when you lean libertarian to figure out: Do you vote for His the? His voice is breaking now, or, folks. Yeah. <laughs> so. Hey, at least he can use a computer. But how about I that Sarah that. Palin? But Sarah Palin can use a computer, we all know, because we've seen her email. So <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So maybe she is more qualified than McCain. I don't but know. But McCain did invent the Blackberry. Yes. Got one right down here. See. There you go. <laughs> there you go. He can't type on one, but he totally invented it. But which politician is most like the iPhone? Most like the iPhone? I don't iPhone? know. Invented the iPhone. All yeah. you... I people discuss. I, I, I don't it know. Was, what? I, I, I don't vote for people based off All right, what phone they're All right, fuck this. Let's talk like. about train porn. Okay, train, train porn. Woo <laughs> woo woo. Ding, 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 ding. So, Aaron, what is train porn? I believe that term is kind of redundant. Um, so, train porn. I don't know where this actually... Oh, okay, I do recall now how it came up. So we're at the side project to start up conference last weekend, and we're in a session about you know expanding your business into new markets, and and Paul, so you guys came up with train porn. Train porn. So Paul, now is this girls on trains or is this? Here, we're we're going here. So engineers gone wild. <clears throat> uh, Paul Bingman, who PDX Flaneur on Twitter, I believe. Yes, that's Paul. The, Paul. Shout out to Paul. Yes, Paul is. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Paul has started a business as a railroad movie consultant because if you know anything about railroads and you watch them in the movies, you realize that the movies are doing it all wrong. So Paul's goal is to hopefully... Wait, wait, wait. We have wait to explain this in terms that Dr. Normal can understand. Wait a minute. I saw Butch Cassidy in the Sundance Kid. No, no. They blew that train car up real nice. Remember that movie <laughs> about computers with Angelina Jolie? Hackers. And you watched Hackers and you were just devastated. Computer? Do you, you remember any movie with computers in it? And how they got it totally wrong. Yeah. Honey, I just made a reference to Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, which came out like in about 72 or 73. Does that tell you about the movies I know about, right? Okay. It's probably nothing I've seen after like about 1982. That's a good point. I okay. have no War comment games? about War Games got it right. Oh, okay. Do you remember the bit in Jurassic Park where she looked at all the pretty pictures on the screen and went, this is Unix? Yeah. 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 And you know how that makes what geeks that like us What does have to do with itch? trains? Those because this is the same it's thing, the same but thing. for trains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the yeah. trains. See, the trains. there'll be a train movie, and <laughs> Back it'll to be trains like from Unix. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there'll be a train movie, and it's like, oh, it's an Amtrak train, but it's set in 1968, and that's just all wrong. And none of you have any idea what I'm talking about because you're the general movie going. Plot. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait a minute. But Amtrak trains are from 1968. No, no, Amtrak <laughs> wasn't created until the early 70s. So. But it's the same cars, just painted with Amtrak. <laughs> It's the government's little secret. Don't let it out. Oh, shh. Damn it. So, Paul is attempting... 
you know, Paul has set up a business and, and is marketing himself as a railroad movie consultant so that hopefully movie producers and script writers and such will, you know, hire him to share his train knowledge because Paul has a lot of train knowledge. He worked for railroads in the past as a dispatcher in some other positions. And I'm going to become a drumming movie consultant. Because when you see drumming in the movies, it's not right. It's never, I mean, maybe the guy's got his hi-hat over here and the floor tom over here. We're talking about train porn. Okay. So back to train porn. Anyway. So Paul threw out this as an idea of, you know, getting his business out to the appropriate market and new markets and such. And somebody in the room, I don't remember who it was, made the comment that he needs to sell his services the same way that they sell porn on the internet because that is quite successful. Now, who, who, was that at a I, conference? Or this, was it? this was at the side project to start a yeah, conference yeah. last week. Yeah, because that's where we saw, saw that, because you tweeted and, about it, I think. And was. somehow, and Rick Tarosi was in the room as well, and I don't remember who the first person to tweet the term train porn was. Quick, somebody go search Twitter and find out. Um, we don't know but, anyone who could do that. Yeah, if only there were some Twitter geeks around. <laughs> Somehow the term of train porn came up, and what's either really funny or really sad, probably the latter, is that as a rail fan myself who will do things like go hang out with a bunch of people in a room and look at a slideshow of train pictures, that wasn't the first time I've heard the term train porn. We've all kind (laughs) of laughed about, you know. Sure, sure. Yeah, so this idea of train porn came up, and then I don't know where we went from there, but somehow like, you know, LOL Trains, LOL Trains came up, and I ended up registering a domain name, and we'll see where that goes. Is it ready yet? Because I think I asked specifically in that room at the time to have the first LOL Trains ready for my viewing pleasure in a week. It's almost- I've been I've been busy preparing for this podcast. Oh, well, okay. All right. I'm going to cut you a break because... Yeah, yeah, you got to be ready for my podcast. Speaking actually, of, actually, WordCamp. Yeah, that's where all my spare time yeah. has gone. No, lately. and there was something that we discussed <clears throat> between after hours and, or well, between the tech edition and after hours. You forgot to do something. I did. I, I committed a faux pas because it's one of the things I want to talk about. I did want to thank all of the awesome volunteers that are helping me with WordCamp. Yay, volunteers! Big round of applause yes. for the volunteers. I, I'm not the only one devoting a bunch of spare time to WordCamp. Um, Betsy Richter is doing some great things with the registration and managing our wait list and the screaming th- crowds of people that want to get in, but you know we're we're let we're keeping them out. We're sadly too late. Um, Damn it. You know, Kelly has helped with coordinating sponsors and is now going to coordinate volunteers on the day of the event. Uh, Reed designed our entire website for us. Chris O'Rourke uh, built our registration system and is helping coordinate our t-shirt orders and so there's a lot of other people other than just me that are putting WordCamp together and so for me to take the credit of for WordCamp being entirely me would be quite wrong so it would be wrong indeed and there then there go. was someone else he wanted to say thank you to is this the the thank you portion of the show yeah because he didn't we didn't give him a chance to thank people on the tech edition because it ran a little long he Meanwhile, in the studio, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we're watching the, train porn. <laughs> mm, trains, trains. Those SD- trains do look cool. I mean, I. How much photography? I mean, you've got you've got some significant photographs, and and here in Southeast Portland, in fact, even here in Selwood, there's a lot of opportunities to shoot some awesome trains. Yeah, there's there's railroads everywhere, and it's interesting because. The majority of the public will be like, why would I want to buy a house near the railroad tracks? It's going to be loud. And then there's the yes, odd... Yes, it is. Then yeah. there's the people like myself or Paul Bingman who are like, I want a house next to the tracks because that'd be cool. You would have so, loved our old house. Where was your old house? It was in Banks. Right behind okay. the... Is it the uh, Tillamook? The switchback? The Port of Tillamook Bay Port Railroad. Port of Tillamook Bay mm-hmm. Railroad and shared by, what's the other one? Not P&W, the, but the, the, Portland, Willamette. the Portland and Western slash Willamette and Pacific, Willamette which Pacific. is actually yep. the same entity. But. And that was the main one. Um, it was in Banks. Yeah. The track was the like 10 feet from our back fence. So they'd go and do switching, and then they would um, uh, pick up lumber from the Banks lumber yard. Mm-hmm. So how come I didn't know you back then? But anyway, would have been convenient. You could have actually just, you know, climbed yeah. up over our fence and. And when the train wasn't there, I mean, or even then, we had a really awesome view of Mount Hood. But we the did? train was a little exciting at night. 
You know, I got used to it. It was it was almost yeah. like a lullaby for a while. I mean, you know, once you get used to it, it moving into off. the city turned. Uh, I have some photos. Turned quiet. Yeah. Ooh. So I know anyway, what I've got. oh yes, thinking. Do we need to go back to where we started that little line of conversation about the people I forgot to thank? <laughs> Do we? Well, he, has, he has one more set of people to thank. So the other people I need to thank are all of the sponsors because Welcome we're charging. To the Academy Awards. Yes. <laughs> and Jesus and my mother. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and Barack Obama. And Barack Obama. <laughs> and Lou. You got to thank Lou. And Michelle Obama. Okay, no, let him thank the sponsors. <laughs> and Joe so Biden. <laughs> we're charging. Uh, so we had this huge giant discussion of do we charge for WordCamp or not? We're charging $10 for WordCamp, which covers about. Anywhere between twenty and thirty percent of the actual that cost. That barely covers the food. I mean, that doesn't. That even that covers food. dinner. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Ten dollars is about the per person cost for dinner. Um, so, mm, in addition to dinner, we're also providing a morning breakfast slash snack and a t shirt and covering the facility costs. I would just go to WordCamp for meals. I mean, it's a good deal. <laughs> yeah, it, and yeah, the meals and the t shirt are worth far more than the ten dollar entrance fee. So mm-hmm. we have a bunch of sponsors that are picking up the rest of those costs. Uh, you can go to wordcampportland.org slash sponsors to see them all, um, all of whom who have sent us cash in varying amounts, and we are greatly appreciative of that. Um, the one, you know, we've had some great sponsors both locally, you know, a lot of local businesses that are involved in the technical scene, as well as a few national type sponsors that we've brought on board, such as uh, actually just added WebMonkey this week. So that's a name that people have heard of. Uh, but really appreciate all that. Um, <coughs> I do have to kind of give a special thanks to uh, the Silicon Florist, Mr. Tarosi, because yes, <laughs> from from the very beginning, you know, as soon as we said we're going to do a WordCamp, he said, "Sign me up as a sponsor." And then, you know, a few weeks ago, we were at a point where we had a whole bunch more people signing up for WordCamp than we kind of expected, which is a good problem to have. But it also means we needed more sponsors. And Rick said, "Well." Go ahead and double my contribution. So, oh, Rick. So, Rick yeah, is a great guy. I want to I want to give a special shout out to the Silicon Florist because um, I mean everyone knows the Silicon Florist website. Um, Rick started a podcast a few weeks back. Yes, he did. And um, I was thinking to myself because you know on kind of on a Friday commute home as I'm thinking of the podcast and thinking, although this podcast is totally not planned. Um, in any way, <laughs> I was thinking, well, you know, for the tech cast, it's kind of nice to shout out what's going on or, or you know, we, we're, you're here talking about specifically about WordCamp. But there's other things going on. And I thought, well, wait a minute. That's what Rick is doing on his podcast. So if you listen to his weekly podcast, he actually will run down exactly, you know, he'll he'll highlight what the news is and then run down what's really going on in the next week or so on the podcast, much like the Silicon Florist. But I did want to give him a, a shout out. Um, for that, for the Silicon Floors podcast, so and last go week's episode, listen to it. Last week, if you want to see what the heck's going good. on, and if you don't want to know what's going on, and you just want a bunch of mindless nonsense, you can come listen, listen to, to Strangers to our show. Live. <laughs> I am all about the mindless nonsense and trains <laughs> and porn. Apparently, <laughs> train porn. No comment. <laughs> yes, uh, I would just like to point out that not only. Did Rick not think twice about doubling his sponsorship when it looked like perhaps WordCamp was going to need it? But literally, I was, I'm coordinating sponsorships, and literally, Rick was the first person to say, Sign me up, put me down for this much, and if you need more, we'll do more. And just left it at that. And it was really exciting for me because I've never done a lot, I haven't done a lot of sponsorship wrangling, and I haven't spent a bunch of time. Um, dealing with, you know, asking people for money and trying to get, you know, arrange payment and that kind of thing. So literally right out of the gate to have it's, somebody step right up you know and just go, go. This is Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to break your legs. Yeah. I, give us money. Sorry. Big Nick um, lives in Eastern Oregon. It's really hard to get him to come to Portland. So yeah, I don't have exactly. time with that. But mm. it was just really nice to be able to, to, to interact with Rick and have him go, yeah, no problem. Whatever you need, you know. I got it, and it was, and and besides that, Rick is just one guy. It's not like Rick is the spokesman for some sort of company or anything like that. Like this is his contribution is basically out of his back. And he's pocket. on panels. Do you think his face is pink yeah. enough yet? And he's on panels. not quite yet because. And have I hit. mentioned the Silicon Florist podcast on SiliconFlorist.com? Weekly Florist. podcast, and he's got a great mic. I haven't seen it. 
but I've heard it's a great mic, <laughs> and it sounds good. It sounds real good. It, it so sounds delightful. We, wanna, we love the way it sounds. Can so I get an really iHeart Rick shirt? Yeah. Well, maybe anyway. I should. I should get when one. When will we to have work? Silicon Floors T-shirts at Tarosi? Hmm. I think he's working on buttons. Yeah, stickers. yeah. Stickers. 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 Buttons. Stickers. I think Twitter in Portland should take up a collection at Beer and Blog, and we will eventually present Rick with a coffee can full of money and say, "Go get us some friggin' shirts already. We want. Right. Some we need swag. stickers. We need silicon swag, baby. <clears throat> Make it happen." But enough about Rick. Let's talk more about train about porn. Okay. okay. So I cue yeah. this thing so, up. You, yeah. you, you, you hear these nice little things. That actually, that's the camera sound. I'm looking for the actual sound here. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. We're it's gonna, train porn. It's gonna coming. We're going to have a train sound soon. Trust me. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. wait, wait. Everybody oh, listen. Yes. Shh. It's coming. Here it is. It's, it's the train. Aaron, <laughs> this is a recording of the train that was in the back of our house. Yeah. This is the Portland Willamette Pacific. What is it? Willamette? What is this? Portland and Western is the official name. But it's Willamette. They merged from the Willamette and Pacific into okay. the Portland this Western. This is the P&W. Oh, wait, no. This is the good part. L- listen. Aaron, which engine is this? Do you know? <laughs> I, I won't comment that I could probably identify the model of the engine, but... <laughs> oh, did you hear it? It decelerated. There's the good... Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. This is train porn, isn't mm-hmm. it? Oh, do you hear it? Mm. So you're all laughing, but there's actually people at conferences that get excited about this. I can give you the MP3 <laughs> if you'd like, and you can enjoy it be, at home. There would be nights that I'd, in I'd have trouble sleeping, and then the train would roll by, and I would just kind of, okay, wait, no, just listen. It wasn't so much the noise, it's more the vibration. Mm-hmm. That didn't bother me either. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, again, Hello. back to the train porn. Thank you very much. <laughs> I oh, kind of like the vibration as well. We do need a mashup with the porn music, don't we? Yes. <laughs> I think that would be appropriate right about now. <laughs> yes, as Media Chick said, brown chicken, brown cow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your train porn moment for the evening. And if you want some pictures to look at to go with it, go to dogcot.com. Dogcot. D O G C A U G H T dot com. Oh, do- I, th- I was thinking like a cot for a dog, like a sleeping uh, cot. Dog okay. cot, it's a railroading term. Look okay. at that train go and go. It's so long <laughs> and big <laughs> and <laughs> powerful. There's a lot of girth, doesn't it? <laughs> That was lovely, Dr. Normal. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> and oh, there... Oh, was it good for you? Was it good for you? <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of feeling a little dissatisfied and unfulfilled. It kind of ended quickly, didn't it? It did. It ended suddenly. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I'm sorry, Aaron. You're on Straight You Love Live After Hours. This is how we roll. <laughs> That's how it works. I understand. So, um, so Anyway. I... I, I <laughs> <laughs> so where do we go after do you need a, train porn? Do you What's need a the, break? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I heard you had props. Pro? Okay. We, we need show to show us your props. Uh, I'll I'll show you my prop at the appropriate moment. It's on the list. It'll come out at okay. an appropriate time right. with the list of things we're gonna. I have about. a list. I have a list of things. Train porn was not. Cammy on. has a plan. I don't Watch think out. that train porn was on the list. I mean, like, hey, Doctor Normal's a spontaneous guy. What can I say? Right? Shall I get you a soapbox so that you can talk about how a photography soapbox. is not a crime? <laughs> So, okay. Yeah. So I take a few <laughs> pictures when I get bored. It's been interesting, um, and the excuse we all hear is 9-11, is that, you know, in the United States, photography is actually not a crime, despite what a lot of security guards and some police officers will want to tell you. It's pretty much legal to take pictures of anything that you can see from a public street um, there's a couple, you know, very minor exceptions that are actually coded into law, into law, like, you know, you can't go, you know, climb right outside the fence of, you know, some sensitive, like, military plant and use a long telephoto lens to mm-hmm. take pictures of things. But, you know, if you're wondering Portland, pretty much anything you can see or take a picture of from a public street, it's legal to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, except for a reasonable expectation of privacy, so... My reasonable expectation of privacy is that I don't get naked in front of an open window. 
Right. And, you know, and if I was like <laughs> peering over your back fence with a long telephoto lens to try and take a picture of you in your house, that would probably be a situation where if you Correct. wanted to sue me, you would probably be in a good position when it went to court. Well, I think but, the difference here is that, um, so when uh, my father is from the former East Germany behind the Iron Curtain. Okay. So when we when I graduated from high school, we all went to Germany. We had people in the West, but also a lot of relatives and people in the East. And I had my decked out Pentax camera. And when you go to a place like East Germany, um, it, you, you know, there's a litany long list of, of things to that you cannot photograph. So one day I photographed Dad's old schoolhouse that he went to, and a East German policeman comes out and starts yelling at us. Turns out the schoolhouse had been turned into a police um, uh, station. One of the things on the list: train stations, police stations. I mean, they had this long list in communist countries about things that you couldn't photograph because right. they were like strategic, right? You know, <laughs> and it was bizarre. And you know, it we we luckily my stuff didn't get confiscated because of my uncle at the time who talked to the guy at length mm-hmm. about, you know, they're from the West, they're tourists, they don't know, just cameras, Stupid this Americans. is the schoolhouse, you know. Silly American well, tourists. Exactly. But, I mean, it was a real, and and um, and it was interesting because the whole time I was there, all I wanted to do was take photographs of statues of Lenin, of communist posters, all kinds of stuff, which I got several at the time. Big fan of the communism, are you? Oh, you know, actually, I should have brought some props. So you asked me about Barack Obama. I mean, I should have actually brought. I should have actually brought some props. I actually have some. Well, when you're there, you're right. like, yeah, that's give me the communist stuff. I need because you can't. You know, it's 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 historic. It's crazy, right. and now it's very historic, right? So I've got like the the you know the. Some banners and some stuff, and and you couldn't smuggle, you know, at a communist country, you couldn't right. smuggle money out. He right? has a communist closet. Spend it out. I don't have a communist. <laughs> you do. Someday you do. he'll There's come out of that communist and, closet. And I have it's a... full of communist stuff. Oh boy! He's now a... this is you can't put this on the podcast, right? Somebody will come after me. He's not really a communist. He just plays <laughs> one on the podcast. Someday he'll come out of that communist closet. Exactly. <laughs> but um, um, uh, I wanted Aaron to get on a soapbox. Okay. Well, anyway, we just talked about communism. Right. Go, Aaron. So, so, go. So, photography is not a crime, but especially since 9 11, um, there's this notion and this whole, you know, like the whole joke with the TSA where, you know, ooh, you're going to bring a w- bottle of water and it has four ounces of water in it instead of three. So, therefore, mm-hmm. we're going to confiscate it because you're a tourist or, you know, things like that. And,. You know, multiply that with the fact that there's like a lot of people in private security jobs that perhaps have a bit of an inflated ego. And it becomes interesting because a lot of people get into trouble just trying to take pictures. Um, People get suspicious when there's somebody taking a picture of something in public. And depending on what it is. um, Like if you're in a bread line in a communist country. (laughs) (laughs) Quite suspicious. Yeah. Um, you know, but from a personal example, um, last year, a couple of years ago, uh, when I was working in Vancouver, I would often go take pictures on my lunch break. I was standing underneath the main railroad bridge between Vancouver and Portland, taking some pictures of the railroad bridge. Uh, a Vancouver police car com- pulls by and swings past me and then stops and pulls over. And the police officer gets out and comes back to talk to me. What are you doing? What are you taking pictures of? Why are you taking pictures of the bridge? Um, because these police officers and security guards are on this whole heightened, you know, ooh, he might be a terrorist. He's taking pictures of a bridge. Well, what that's if, that's exactly what's happened. What if he's going to blow 9/11. it up? Yeah. That's exactly. exactly what's happened. But what's interesting is along with some of the rest of our rights that we used to enjoy right. before nine eleven. Yeah. It's you know, <laughs> the whole you, know, you, you can take pictures legally. There's no law against it. And I've never had an encounter where I've run into a law enforcement officer who's been completely... I take that back. But actually, actually, I did run into I, I, I one wanna, who's completely in the wrong. But. Actually, the um, you taking a lot of pictures of trains. Mm-hmm. Have you run into this problem before? Because if you go down to some of these areas, I know because we were surveying... Um, uh, I actually worked 
on a committee on a light rail project in okay. the last year. Mm-hmm. And I actually went down and surveyed the Brooklyn Yard and just walked around to kind of see. We were kind of looking at the pathway between East Moreland and behind Reed College and then kind of how that's broken up by Brooklyn Yards and right. then going over into um, into a North uh, Moreland mm-hmm. there. And, um, you know, immediately when you're out there, there's security guards and stuff. Yep. And it, you're, you're actually on this... You know, and you're just kind of looking there to figure out, you know, what kind of construction could be done for pathways and things. Right. And you're you're on railroad property at that. So there's kind of interesting. There's the whole. But be- back in the old days, it would have been like yeah, nobody would care. Nobody would care. Yeah. And, and now it's like as oh, you know, you know. as a rail fan, as somebody who's interested in trains, you know, I have you know friends and buddies who are rail fans who are you know. You know, older than me who would talk about oh yeah well, when i was a kid or a teenager in my college we'd just go wander through the train yard and sure. take pictures of whatever we wanted sure. and nobody would you care. can't and do that no not anymore the the railroads are under a heightened kind of sense of awareness and security um the railroads are kind of in an interesting position because you know they're private corporations but they're private corporations that hire a police force the railroad police um are you know and it's a little different from state to state, but in general, the railroad police are certified um, law enforcement officers in the states that they operate. So are they, they federal. They are. They're federal, right? Well, they're kind of private, but they go through all the oh, same state. That's not the right answer. Well, they go through all the oh. same state certifications that your your local um, state officers go through. So, like you know, a and you know. Amusement. Um, mm-hmm. Railroad police officers are usually called special agents. You can interpret special however you want. Right. Um, so a railroad special agent in Oregon has the full powers of a police officer in the state of Oregon. They can, you know, they're not just like a private security guard where it's like they can kick you off the property or call the real police. Yeah. Um, a railroad police officer can detain you. They can arrest you. They can take you to jail. Send you to Gitmo. Um, they, they are, yeah. Gitmo. <laughs> well, yep. So... The railroad police officers have that duty, but but they're private. They're employed by the railroad. Oh, so the union, I love how we outsource our government. The, don't you? The Union Pacific Railroad special agents work for the Union Pacific Railroad. Um, I found it on Wikipedia. If you'd like a long and boring explanation as to how uh, how the an railroad explanation, police- <laughs> yes, long and boring, no. It says they are certified law enforcement officers who carry police and arrest exactly. powers. Arrest. It says really? arrest powers. Yes. Well, but, yeah. but can you be arrested by uh, private security in uh, Pioneer Place? Correct? Yes. Well, they can put I, you in a room and call the real cops, I think. I, I don't want to get into the whole Portland Patrol discussion because that's a exactly. totally separate podcast that you need to have Matt Davis on for. There we go. Yes. Um, Make a note. <laughs> so, yeah. But, and you know why you should have him on? He has an accent. What? Oh, we, yeah, we like the folks yeah, with Kelly accents. Kelly has a thing Which for accent? Matt's accent. Yeah, Matt, I could care less about. Which but, accent? you know, if he'd read me the phone book, that'd be all right. It's not, which accent is it? Yeah, what kind of accent? He's English. Okay. He's like from I've London been there, done proper, that. I believe. We've, we've, had, been there, we've had, done had multiple English people on the show. Multiple English people on. Oh, Come on. What kind of podcast do you think we're running here? <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> about two months ago. Yes, sir. Um, like I said, I, I know some railroad train geeks. So I know a guy who runs... A railroad audio stream server. He has a scanner at his house that's hooked up to the railroad radio frequencies. I've done, yeah, been there, done that. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. He's also an audio geek like yourself. He's a ham radio operator. So he has his server hooked up and then he streams it live on the internet. So he sits at his day job working for a large multinational, you know, IT conglomerate and happens to sit there with his headphones on listening to what's going on. So I get an IM from him one afternoon of... Hey, Amtrak just hit somebody at this railroad crossing right near where my day job office is. I'm like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. He's like, yeah, they're calling for an ambulance and the police mm-hmm, and all that. And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, it might be time for me to go take a break. That's and actually illegal. I know, but what he just did, I know, <laughs> because you cannot. I know. By the FCC by law, you cannot re transmit anything. Anything the that you hear, that you, you can heard. listen to it. You can it's listen, but you can't. Yeah. They're gonna come knocking on your door looking for names soon. You're busted. Yeah. Anyway, so. So I decide it's a great time for a break because my office is about three or four blocks from the railroad track. Right. So I wander down there, and um, Amtrak had hit a pedestrian who apparently uh-huh. his mother never told him to like look both ways before he Ooh. crossed the train tracks. 
Um, fortunately, it seemed to be relatively minor. They'd loaded him in the ambulance, but nobody was in any real hurry to do anything to him or whatever. So I get down there, and I happen to have my point-and-shoot camera with me because I always have a point-and-shoot camera with me. What do you use? My point-and-shoot is a cheapo, like, $200 Canon A5 something or other. It's like a 5 megapixel. It's still a respectable. You can get some yeah, decent, decent stuff. Yeah, right. and it fits neatly into my pocket kind of thing. So... Mm-hmm. I turn the block off of Water Avenue down in southeast Portland, and I'm about a block away from the tracks at this point. I've got my camera in my hand. I put it up to my, you know, to my face. I'm taking a couple pictures. As soon as I get my camera up to my face, one of the Union Pacific Railroad special agents who's at the accident scene immediately starts running towards me. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. (laughs) So... He's coming running across the, you know, across the street. I'm standing on a public sidewalk. And he starts yelling, who are you with? Who are you with? I'm like, what do you mean, who am I with? Who who are you taking pictures for? Just me, happened to be wandering by. And he's like, well, you need to leave. You can't take pictures. I'm like, well. Wrong answer. I'm sorry. I'm the Associated Press. Thank you very much. Exactly. (laughs) So, yeah. everything. CNN. Everything's cool at the point till where he says you can't take pictures because it's like, well, no, actually I can. I'm not interfering with your accident investigation. I'm out of I'm a block away. This is perfectly legal. I can take all these pictures I want, you know. I'm with RPDX. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So That's right. But so that's Perhaps the thing. you've heard of this crack news organization? You know. You haven't, have you? Given that I was on the whole, you know, break from work thing, I didn't really want to get into it with him right there and, like, press the issue. Had it been a weekend and I had some spare time, it might have been kind of fun, <laughs> but... Actually, I, I, I got to... I know a reporter, editor of a hometown neighborhood newspaper publication in a neighborhood here. Mm-hmm. Who's owned by a larger conglomerate? Conglomerate, right? Who basically no told names, me once, of course, no, no names. names. Yeah. Who basically told me once, yeah, I made my own press card, <laughs> and the photog- and the, he's got like one main photographer and then special reporters and stuff, and it's a well-known paper around here, right? Um, and literally, it's like you just make your own card and then you you have it, you know, you just make it, and and you know, Aaron, you probably know a few things about. Photoshop, maybe? Perhaps. You know? So you just kind of make make one and, and, you know, just, you know, print something on there. But, and, but, and then just yes, go, oh, yes, I'm but yes Aaron and Hockley. No. Yes and no. The other thing is that, And with though, the Daily Planet. Aaron a, Hockley, <laughs> Daily Planet. But really, as a private citizen, when you're standing on the street a block away from an accident scene, you ha- should have the same rights to take those pictures as a credential journalist. Yes, but we're moving into sort of a Russian phase in the United States where you but the Constitu- every law is broken by every citizen, aren't the, we? The Constitution hasn't quite moved there yet. So. No, the Constitution has, but the Supreme Court has. Well, so... Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway... Where oh, were go, we? so go ahead. Back to this whole soapbox of photography is not... So, <laughs> Since 9-11, there's this whole thing where a lot of people are getting questioned just for the act of taking photographs. And there's kind of this, you know, where you can publish and what you can do with photographs once you've taken them is a whole separate area of law. And yes, there are more restrictions, but the act of taking photographs is not illegal. And, you know... um, if you want to read up a little bit more on kind of a well-known internet photographer who's run into this multiple times is Thomas Hawk, which is thomashawk.com. He's a photographer in the San Francisco area. He's got a, a great photo. I think it's one of his all-time top photos on Flickr of a just, you know, a-hole private security guard he ran into. He's got a picture of this guy giving him the bird as he's trying to take pictures of a building. You can take pictures of buildings. That's perfectly mm-hmm. legal, um, you know. The cops can't get you in trouble for taking pictures. Um, the cops cannot, without a court order, tell you to delete all the photos off your cameras. They cannot confiscate your film legally without a court order. Um, yeah, but the, the problem is, so the problem here is that you're correct, and but the problem is all the hassle and all the stuff that they make right. your life miserable in the meantime and and you know this was tested even in the late 90s with the wto protests and things um i've seen i mean i remember back in the late 90s if you watched just portland cable access and you watched a lot of 
some really good shows on Portland Cable Access about people who would go out and film protests and stuff and get cameras, you know, ripped out of their hands from, you know, local authorities. Um, And, you know, pretty much at the time that it's happening, anything can happen. Right. You can get maced in the face. You can get handcuffed and drug away and you can get thrown in jail and then when you get your you know maybe you get in front of a judge and the judge goes okay all right fine leave but you know yeah that's that's the trick is it's like even though legally you're in the right there may be a bunch of hoops you have to go through before you eventually get that but it's not just hoops it's it's actually it's jail time or it's yeah like you said mace or or, and and so your camera equipment smashed i mean that's the thing you know, like with this guy, you know, this Union Pacific officer, it's like, like I said, you know, had it been a Saturday and I had some spare time, it might have been fun to kind of challenge him and say, well, no, actually, I can take these pictures. What are you going to do about it? Um, but, you know, given that I didn't really have that time and didn't want to end up going to jail before going back to work or whatever. Exactly. So it, it's interesting, but, you know. I don't know if it's a public awareness or education issue. I think some of it is a, you know... Helping, well, an edu- a public the- awareness or education issue for whom? Well, for the police? <laughs> you know? every, I mean, everybody in that... A general awareness that when a police officer says, you know, you can't take a picture of this, you know, except for a few specific circumstances defined by law, the general answer is, well, yeah, actually, I can. Um there's was an interesting kind of related post earlier this week by uh, Diesel Boy on RPDX.net. I saw that one. Um, Oregon has a law, um, and you know, I think I left a comment to this effect. I'm all for the whole right to privacy thing, but you know, Oregon has a law that basically prohibits uh, audio recording of a conversation unless people are aware that they're being recorded. Well, that that's not an Oregon law. That's a that's federal, federal law. Okay. That's that why when you, law. when you, you make a phone secret. call. They always right. say this okay. this phone call may now, be recorded for so monitoring but, purposes. Actually, I believe I, you know, people can correct me who have legal right. yeah. standing, but all of this, I believe you we can, are not lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Strange Love Live does not. But I believe employ um, you can make a videotape of you can make a video of someone in a public place, but if you add audio, it's actually illegal without their permission. So it's the audio piece that's illegal. Right. And so this post that Diesel Boy made was about a case here in Portland where somebody had videotaped the Portland police making an arrest, um, videotaped with audio. And after this arrest was all done with, the police officer then decided to Um, I don't know if it was a citation or an arrest or whatever, the person who made the video for violating this law that he had made the video with this audio recording without the consent of the people that were involved. Right, right, Um, So it's kind of a related thing. But you're kind of protected there because you're taking still photography. You're not doing video. Yeah, without the audio component to it. And if it was just a a non-audio video, you'd be okay. Right. But with the audio component, it crosses into that territory where there's these laws that protect it. Uh, with still photography, it's not a non-issue. I can go take a picture of police, you know, arresting somebody, and you know, I've done this. Um, I really, I, I drew the attention of the Multnomah County sheriffs when they were doing like an inmate transfer between the jail and the yep. little jail van. I used I was, to watch that every day when I was at the bus stop. Uh, yeah, when I went I, home from college. I was about a, I was about <laughs> down a, on the bus mall, a block down the street, and I this happened to be going on, and I was taking some pictures and. Um, I'd taken a couple pictures and, you know, again, it's the whole, you know, do you stick around and argue about this or do you just kind of move along at the point which one of the police officers involved kind of, I caught his attention and he started kind of wandering towards me and waving and I just happened to put my camera away and wander up the street and that was the end of that. But right. So, so. I'm curious and it's, it's on, along the same lines, but it, it, you know, into personal privacy again, uh, the paparazzi. Following people around, harassing them, chasing them down the streets in cars. You Did you do you that like a lot? It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? I said, you know you like it. Oh, yes. I love it when people chase me around in what? What was the question, Cammie? The, <laughs> <laughs> the whole paparazzi thing is kind of I'm going to play the paparazzi music for you, Cammie. Oh, yeah. That's not paparazzi music. Well, That's I'm porn working. music. It's, yeah, it's all the same. <laughs> well, if you're chasing, you know, if you're chasing Ron Jeremy down the street, that's there you how go. It's it rolls. This do you do that often do, when he's in town? Do you? Hasn't happened yet, actually. Really? No. Um, anyway, uh, 
the paparazzi thing is just kind of its own entity. The whole, you know, in general, I think I alluded to this earlier, taking pictures of pretty much anything is cool. What you do with them is actually where there's a lot more restrictions as far as things like, you know, I can't take pictures of you and start selling them, you know, and I'm overgeneralizing, but in general, I can't take pictures of you and start selling them for most purposes without your permission, or I'm going to be in a bad legal position and things like that. So I can take a picture of anybody walking down a street, but there's some laws surrounding what I can then do with that picture without potentially opening myself up to some liabilities. So. No, I think what I was asking more is, is so that's the perspective. Your perspective is the, the photographer being harassed mm-hmm. for, for not doing anything wrong. I'm just wondering what you think. I mean, there are some cases where photographers do the harassing. And no. what do you think of, what do you think of that as a responsible photographer, which I know that you totally are because I don't know. We've said it in the past. Has anyone ever seen a, really bad picture of themselves that Aaron Hockley put up? Never. A- Aaron's a very responsible photographer in that way. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you. you. You take nice event photos and et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, yes. And so on and so forth. Actually, where do I mean, no, no, so I what wanna... you post on Flickr, what, I mean, what, what is your whole, you know, I mean, you got the train... Porn, which is actually, I've seen some of it. It's very, very nice. You've got like one, what engine is that you've got coming down? Almost looks like you were standing in front of it with a steam. Is it that? The- I My most popular, my most interesting, according to the Flickr interestingness algorithm. There we go. My most interesting photo on Flickr is a photo of three steam engines actually coming towards me oh. on three parallel Maybe that's tracks. The- Maybe that's not the one that you're thinking of. There's a lot of steam. I know that. Yeah, steam trains are popular. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people that get excited about steam trains. Absolutely. I was excited when I (laughs) saw the photo. Yeah, My most interesting photo is this one of these three steam locomotives coming towards me um, that was taken up at the Mount Rainier Scenic Railroad a couple years ago. Did you stand out on the track? I did. But don't... Don't your mommy ever tell you not to stand on the track? Don't tell anybody, but the whole thing was totally staged with about 60 other photographers standing next to me across those tracks. There we go. Good, good, good. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was, that was a, you know, this is, you know, how much do you like train pictures? This is a case where myself and these other 60 photographers paid a bunch of money to the railroad to go up there and be able to stand there and take that picture and some other pictures kind of thing. So, so do you go down here on the, uh, um, the, uh, what is, what is that? The, it's not the, 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 it's, it's named after that, that, the Oaks Bottom, the, but it's named after that, that book in the movie. The, oh, the, the the one with Tom. Hanks. Yeah, Tam- Thomas. Tom no, Hanks. Tom Hanks. Um, Tom Hanks. Something Express. The something Polar, Polar Express. Express. Polar Thank ex- you. So the yeah. Polar Express. Yeah. Do you get, do you do that one? So le- what le- what engine is that? So legal disclaimer. Okay. It's actually the Holiday Express because the uh, group that operates it does not have the rights to use. The I think name the first the year was Express. the Polar Express actually. Um, the Holiday Express. This is where I can pimp a good nonprofit. The Holiday Express is operated by the Oregon Railway or Railroad Heritage Foundation, the ORHF.org. Right. Um, which, which is over by OMSI. Which is a nonprofit group that is seek. their main goal is to seek a permanent home for the three steam engines that the city of Portland owns. There's the SP4449, which is usually painted in the orange and red daylight colors. That's probably the one that's gained the most visibility um they also have the spns 700 which is the second or third largest operating steam locomotive in the united states and then they have a smaller one it's the oregon railway and navigation company 197 that's a little one that's still under restoration um but yes i have been involved with that um I've taken a lot of photos of it. I know a lot of the people that are involved in that group. So if you're looking for a random local charity to give money to, go to orhf.org and send them your cash. Yep. Yep. So they've um, they're in a position right now that the locomotives are stored in a roundhouse at Brooklyn Yard, here in Southeast Portland. Um, that roundhouse and the property that they're on is owned by the Union Pacific Railroad, and. It's cool that they're housing these historic locomotives for now, but ultimately the Union Pacific Railroad, you know, they're a nice giant for-profit corporation and they've got better things they could do with that land and that area. Um, They haven't kicked the ORHF out yet, but there's serious talk about 
the UP would like to do other things with that area, and they need to find somewhere else to keep the steam locomotive. So Stinking exactly. UP. Yeah. So, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I can say that it was a joke. So they're in a. Cammy's dad worked for the UP for many, many years. Yes, it did. His okay. whole career. Yeah. Retired last so. year. Well, no, actually. Otherwise only known after as they, only after they purchased the. What the hell's his blog? For. Your What's dad has a blog? train blog. No, it's not about trains. Okay. Um, no, what's it, what's but it, it could be. The blog father or something. It's not the blog. He changed it. It used to be something else. It's Daddy Chaos the blog Daddy father. Daddy Chaos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, whatever. What did he do for the UP? Stuff. 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 <laughs> Actually, was IT, he an engineer, IT, a conductor? No, no, no. no, no, no. I, think guy, when, I think when uh, I was really little, he used worker. to work at, um, in the yards. Okay. But no, he's been in office. Actually, actually an office when I met him, he was time. doing a bunch of IT work yeah. okay. and doing wireless. So he was working on a project where an engineer gets in the locomotive and they have a laptop that's all wirelessly and satellite linked. And so, you know, when we met, we talked about this because right. I was actually working on some wireless projects at the time. But, you know, the thing about the railroads is they're grandfather. So they've got their own radio frequencies. They've got satellite. They've got all their own crap along those those lines. And the, um, the laptops were essentially what's called like a tough book. So mm-hmm. it's like one of those laptops. Right. It's actually the same that the police and the military use. So you, it's one of those laptops where you throw it out your car into the middle of the street and then you go pick it up right. and you open it up and you boot it up. He it's was, like He was working on uh, demonstrations with it where he actually got to throw it across the room. It was like the highlight yeah. of his career, I think, with yeah. being able to throw a computer across the That's room. That's how we bonded before yeah. before Cammy and I were married. That's yeah. how we bonded. We Normally talked about wireless are... laptop technology. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's that's totally normal. But um, <laughs> that's I'm Doc Normal. Of course. And speaking most, of which... No, I have the most important railroad-related question before no, you we don't. go there. I, okay. Really? It, I just want to know where uh, Aaron stands on the caboose. <laughs> Wait a minute. Before Aaron answers the caboose question... It's an important Tonight we're going to talk about question. drinks because our drinks are sponsored by... I don't know where Aaron stands on the caboose or something. So, Cammy <laughs> Chaos, what are you drinking? Um, Cammy Chaos is drinking water. and What um, kind of cold pills did you take tonight? Um, Sudafed. Ooh, the real stuff I from Vancouver. I think that's illegal. No, no, it's it's Sweet. it's legal to consume it in the state of Oregon. It's just not legal to buy it without, without a, prescription. a prescription. That's kind of like underage smoking, right? Right. Okay. Um, oh, and I'm drinking a cherry flavored cola beverage. Okay, Aaron. I had a lovely martini, and now I'm drinking water. Oh, he, yeah, he's yeah. out, man. Yeah. And I'm I'm just you know I'm just drinking some white wine here. But the studio audience, what are you drinking? I believe mine is a lovely vodka and fruity beverage, yeah, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Vodka and fruity juiciness. Gin and fruity beverage. Ooh, gin and fruity beverage. That sounds yeah. good. I want to know if Cammy has a bottle that says fruity beverage. I'm going to start labeling them fruity beverage. Okay. Now, so we're going to fade that out. And I have to cue up some, some other music before we ask the question again. Okay. Which is where, hang on, hang on. This is not caboose music. Oh, no. I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were playing it earlier. So, Burr. Aaron, yeah. where do you stand on the caboose, baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I think is hilarious is that I bet a ton of the audience has no idea what we're talking about. Anyway. That's sad. So Doesn't everybody? I want to know. You would the, think they would the come caboose? up on their railroad history. Does to the understand. studio audience understand what we're talking about? Hint, have you noticed a caboose on a train lately? Is that what we're talking hmm. about? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're the talking real about question is, have you noticed a caboose on a lady lately? No, no, no. We're talking about train <laughs> that's cabooses. that's what I'm asking. Oh, no. We're I'm talking, talking about, about the caboose. We're talking about train caboose. I want to know where he stands on both cabooses. Okay, that's fine. You can ask him both. I want to know let's, what you... I can answer both questions Let's start questions with the train caboose, once. and let's see if we can get Aaron to tell an interesting story I, about him and I later. Okay. Okay. Wait a <laughs> minute. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Okay, so this could be interesting. Um, so anyway. Troubles are brewing in Strange Love Live studio. I'll just answer both questions with, I'm a fan of the caboose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well done. Well done. And by that, he meant this. Oh, yeah. You hear that caboose? That would be a locomotive, but, you know. 
Yeah, <laughs> my caboose is somewhere there, right? <laughs> yeah. No, actually, no, there, there was no not. caboose on that train. I, I'm guessing the Portland was, and Western probably never operated a caboose through banks. I never right. saw a caboose from Mars. Uh, no, no. Oh, I, no, I, I did. One, one time, actually, one time prob- we saw a caboose. Yeah, there's a few cabooses left. And I got really left. excited. With people taking pictures out the side of the caboose in our house. I believe that we was when we, <laughs> I think Sorry. That's when we got blind. What is the plural of caboose? Cabise? Oh. I believe that's actually Capiche? kind of... Capiche? Caboose-y? Under discussion, Cabice? I don't know the. Affi- I, I know people that will call Caboose it pussy? either. Um, I don't know. I know a guy who's kind of like one of the local caboose authorities, and I believe he calls it cabise. But cabise. Oh. There was an entire slideshow of nothing but cabooses throughout Washington, Oregon. Wow. Wow. Now that's some specific train porn <laughs> that right there. Is. That was that's what I'm exactly. thinking. That's Can so I just say. The train porniest. That was getting to the point where even people who are into trains were like, okay, this is enough. Uh, no offense, yeah. Aaron, but <laughs> I'd go to that caboose slideshow, but that wouldn't be it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be going, oh, man. So, railroad slideshows, not the place to find the other kind of caboose. Just no, so. no, 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 no. Well, you guys need like the, like the, um, you know, like the car guys, like the muscle car guys where they have the, the calendars with the girl draped over the muscle How car. How do you lay a girl across a locomotive? That's what I'm thinking. It's been done. I don't know, but I bet um, Aaron Hockley, Hockley Photography, will figure it out. Logistically, <laughs> do you stretch her out on the cow catcher? What? Un- unfortunately. Ooh, the cow catcher. <laughs> Say it again, Cammy, because that two pack of day boys is really working for that. Try it again. Ooh, the cow catcher. Now there's a sound bite for you, Doctor. Exactly. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the big railroads now have no sense of humor about things like that. So <laughs> just now about the well, cow catcher. <laughs> So railroading is just a humorless endeavor, essentially, it has, right? Since not, it's kind of interesting. I mean, since like, well, blaming it on 9/11 again, darn those airplanes and Arab terrorists and such. Um, oh, but, but they weren't Arab; they were from Iraq. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, I just have to ask if if that's trains. That's because our are president s- didn't understand geography. If <clears throat> trains are so humorless, how how are you ever going to pull off lull trains? The lull trains the thing will be interesting. Trains, so, right? I'm my goal with lull trains. If I'm hoping after word camp, I'll have at least you know twelve minutes a week to spend on lull trains. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if anybody other than like the train audience catches on to that. I don't know. We'll see. So, I mean, I'm gonna link it. I, I actually all I over think, the place. I'm gonna run around going. Have you really seen lull trains? I'm going to blog it. Oh. I will blog that all the live long day. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. There's going to be no... There's oh, and that be... was a railroad reference too. all the live yeah, long yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really should have... You know, this sucks because we have a train CD somewhere from a kid's train party <laughs> and I really should have prepared because I never prepare for this show and got it all queued up here for... Yeah, it's... For, people are going to hear about, you know, Photoshop disasters and cake wrecks and the fail blog and lol trains. You know. Yeah. No, so, lull trains yeah. could be. And Doctor cool. Who. Uh, no, yeah. no, no, not Doctor. I mean, Doctor Horrible or. No, Dr. if it's Who? if Versos, if we're talking about Versos blogging things. Oh then. well, yeah. I don't you remember fan of a the train sci-fi? in recent Doctor Who. No, I'm, I'm that odd geek who was like never no, into the sci-fi. Really? Like Star what Trek. If... So here's my take on Star Trek. If this is all futuristic, how come everybody just looks like a human with a deformed head? Yeah, exactly. No, I'm with you on that one. It was the best they could do in the 60s. Really. Yeah, but but Aaron, no, no, no. That was that was the no, next generation. It, the 60s them, was yeah. how come it was a human with a bunch of face paint? Uh-huh. <laughs> so I mean, at least you know in the 70s. Oh, look, you can tell they're aliens because well, did you the like women Star Wars when naked. you were a kid. I did like Star Wars, and somewhere I have a bunch of old Star Wars toys. They're probably actually worth money, but there you go. Yeah. So that's my retirement plan. Is that you know. That's too bad, because I know a place where they could have a very loving home if you were ever to want to yeah, get rid if, of them. If only I knew a Star Wars geek. Cammy Chaos has Star Wars toys from when she was a kid, too. I do. <gasps> yeah. yeah. Versa, have you not seen my Star Wars toys? No. Um, You've shown me a lot of things, Ms. Chaos, but your Star Wars <laughs> toys were not among them. Oh, baby, I'll show you my Star Wars toys. Um, my Star Wars toys are not collectors. They're, they're not to sit... And gather dust. Yeah, they with they are played with Mine by me, used. and they are played with by my child now. Yes. Mine were used as well. So, yeah. yes. but was that the was that the big thing? So you just weren't 
too hip to the sci-fi or just in general? Yeah, or? <laughs> yeah not really. It was, you know, my, you know, like growing up as far as like what TV was on, my parents never really had the sci-fi stuff on, so I didn't gain a lot of exposure what to it. What did your but... parents have on television? <sighs> I don't know. A lot Little of House like on the Prairie? mainstream sitcom kind of stuff. Um, no, Little House on the Rerun? Ooh, ooh, no, rerun? I'm not. Soap? Just hey, hey, soap. hey, hey. Lawrence no, Welk. not Lawrence. Oh, see, no, see, I remember my grandparents making Lawrence Welk references. Yeah, I'm not quite and, that old. Yeah, I'd sit and watch Lawrence Welk with Grandma, and then didn't it was we all? no, no, no. It was Lawrence Welk, and then a syndicated show from England, sci-fi show, which I have the entire series on DVD called UFO Baby. Ooh, yeah, which you is take, the entire <laughs> reason that Doctor Normal likes women in boots. Thank you, Jerry Anderson. Think, think. Women wow. with purple wigs in silver short skirts on the moon base. Yeah. This was a precursor <laughs> to Space 1999. If That's hot. Knows. Made by Jerry Anderson, the Thunderbirds yeah. and the Little Puppets. It's it's one of those crazy hot 60s wow. show of hot I, people I think we might have to have in a space UFO fighting viewing. aliens, man. Sounds I'm like we missed simply out. must. It sounds like yep. we're going to have to set up a UFO. Um, I bet you G. Marathon. Walter knows the show I'm talking about. <laughs> as a matter of fact, as I look down as into the look, chat room, is. G. Walter said UFO rock. UFO rock. Yeah, exactly. I, I knew G because, you know, the G and I. Yeah. Yes. We hang. The G. And he's going to be a guest soon, isn't he? He is going to be he a guest He is going soon. to be a guest uh, the week after next, if I'm not mistaken. So what, are you, what, what was your favorite show when you were a kid? Seriously. Name names, Aaron. I don't know. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Norman, that's, right? that's enough out of you. What show is he a dynamite? So, no, he's a little bit young for that. Yeah, no, I, I didn't watch a ton of TV. I'm trying to think back to like like the middle school, high school years. and Bullwinkle? DuckTales? So, well, yeah, there was the oh, cartoon DuckTales. years, but I did outgrow the cartoons, Super unlike friends? some people. Um, hey, hey now. I'm sure you were trying to insult Verso, but... That was a general some people. But, of course, I wouldn't be referring to present company, but... Only because we can reach him. It's true, and my boots are pointy. This is Much true? pointier than the bat crocs. The bat crocs, yes. <laughs> I had to wash the bat crocs this evening. It's like, oh, my bat crocs are dusty. Oh, God, you wore them. I didn't even look. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dr. Normal said I wasn't going to. I wasn't to let you in the house if you had the crocs on. What do, it, you, what do you like about plastic stamped shoes? They're They're quite comfortable. It was... Yeah, that's they're they're casual, they're comfortable, they're interesting. They're not, and you don't have to sacrifice a cow for them. No, they're and they're not quite Ugh. as holy. I like cows as the the beach version. These are these are the professional version, I believe, because they don't have all the holes in the tops. So and they're not orange. And they're not orange. Although Josh's RSS Crocs are awesome, so Ugh. they're orange. He embraces they? them and really just owns that, and that's why it's awesome. It's, it's See, Mario ge- Batali does it and looks like a tool. <laughs> Josh Bancroft does it, and it is frigging awesome. I have to say, my... Uh, it's geek bling. One of my best really friends, is. who's a total geek, and the godfather of my child wears orange Crocs, and he's a total geek, and he looks like a dork in him. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. That's he doesn't because listen he's not to Josh. my show. That's because he's not because Josh he's Bancroft. Josh. Maybe if he listened to my show, I wouldn't think he looked like a dork in his Crocs. That I might don't be. know. Hmm. Why don't geeks <laughs> adopt like good, like fashion, Italian sense. and Argentinian footwear styles? I mean, you know, come on, live a little because bit. Because no geek knows anything beyond fine Corinthian yeah. leather. You, That's why, and you can't get shoes in that. Do you yeah. know a lot of geeks that are into fashion? Because those aren't the geeks that I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want to. If you find them, have Hence them all the on your fucking show. Crocs. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I need fashion geeks. Any fashion geeks out there? Geeks? You know, uh, G. Walter You'd said if there his were three-year-old any... daughter looks great in Crocs, and our daughter has Crocs, and you know, for kids' shoes, they're kind of cute. Well, for a kid. Kinda for kids, Crocs. they are yeah, cute, I kid. agree. Relatively inexpensive. You can hose them off. No, 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 no. Oh, my gosh, no. If you get actual real Crocs So you Crocs still haven't children, answered the same question. Outrageously expensive. <laughs> you still haven't answered the question what your favorite show was on TV when you were a kid. Go! Yes. Okay. Were you a Sid and Marty Croft so, fan? Great I, Space no, Coast so or what? I, I figure I have to mention one that came into mind, even though it's just kind of hilariously cheesy. I was a giant fan of the show Chips. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ponch and... Uh, John. John? Was it John? Ponch it was John. John, yes. 
That so, does sound like I, gay porn, doesn't it? It really does. And, and the mustaches I, didn't I'm help I'm sure there was any. a chips so, porn. So, Blue boy. Were you special. were you were you more of a fan of <laughs> John or Punch? Quick to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I do this for Verso, really. So I I don't know that I really had a favorite character. It was just more the whole police thing, yeah. I think. So With the little motorcycles. I'm still fascinated by random police activities. Like this morning I <laughs> went <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You do have a camera. I'm surprised they haven't chaser. busted that door down already. This yeah, morning, exactly. I went down to the bank, and as I was pulling out of the little strip mall parking lot where the bank was, I'm like, ooh, flashy lights over there. So I went down that road and discovered that apparently at some point this morning in my neighborhood... Also illegal. <clears throat> following it's illegal the to actually lights. follow... Follow just as a bystander. Dude, you know it what? Would, You're that kid stop. in school that's not... like, I'm going to tell the teacher. That's <laughs> <No>. illegal. <laughs> I'm just saying... <laughs> I just happened to take that route out of the neighborhood. Exactly. And, <laughs> and it was quite fascinating because apparently somebody had taken their Mustang, driven it off the road, taken out an entire streetlight pole, driven through an electrical transformer Method. box, and into somebody's house. Method. There was a car in the garage, and there Method. were already two other cars in the garage. So wow. it was quite interesting. It's either meth head or vindictive. He went up to Vancouver and you to know, get Sudafed, that's exactly, for sure. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. You want to know how you can tell he's a meth head? Because he's in Vancouver. Because Portland... We don't have those anymore because we've solved the meth problem by getting rid of the fucking Sudafed. <laughs> of yes. course. Although, oh apparently, sorry, all I know upset. is... Suddenly, we Appar- are the McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Apparently, TriMet Line 15 runs to Vancouver because there can be no other explanation. But anyway. There we go. <laughs> Preach it, brother. <laughs> so, you know, another cool show that um, I tweeted about for a long... Uh, oh, several months back... And it's actually one of G. Walter's favorites, a Jack Webb production. Is this where we talk about your man crush on G. Walter? Yeah, but anyway. Okay. Um, but uh, it, but what's interesting is uh, G. Walter actually made a career out of this, and of course, I just watched and being the you know lazy moron that I was, I just was like, oh, it was a cool show, and you know, just like slacked. Right? <laughs> is Emergency. I never watched Emergency. Emergency, Emergency baby. I've never yeah. even heard the, of that show. The no, I've heard of it. Semi-true story, as told by Jack Webb, of the first paramedics in Los Angeles Rampart. You know, so yeah, we had like a long. Oh, there, there you go. It was emergency. emergency. Actually, Tarosi apparently was a huge emergency fan. I thought yeah. we'd put the kibosh. On and actually, the Brick's other name. night, the other night, I was just, you know, how like it's <laughs> late at night and you just start googling nonsense you can watch it on Hulu. oh you know what i actually have this really great suggestion Hulu. when it's late at night and you're tired so you start googling nonsense that's the time when you turn your computer off well check this out oh, you bed. mean like when i just typed in punch john porn exactly <laughs> <laughs> kelly you may go oh, to bed dear. now so check this out check this Nighty out just kids. the other night i sort of did this google stream of consciousness consciousness that went from jack webb to um to uh, 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 Julie London, who was Nurse Dixie McCall on Emergency, and then Bobby Troop, who was actually pre, and they were all married at some point in Hollywood. All these guys in the fifties were all like married. Webb was married to, 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 to Dixie McCall, and she then was married to Bobby, and they were all like an emergency. Like Jack Webb would sleep with people and then put him in his TV shows in the sixties and the seventies. It was crazy, but it's just crazy. I'm a huge Dragnet. Come on. Dragnet. Dragnet. Yeah, Dragnet. You can't beat a good Dragnet. The whole Dragnet. concept of Jack Webb in the bedroom is just an interesting <laughs> exactly. exploration where there we was don't want to go. No, there was a picture of him like from like 56 when he was married to Julie London and he was thin and he looked all right, you know? And it was like back in the 50s days when everyone looked good. But it's like, you know, smoking and eating steaks every night. It's like he turns Ooh, into the guy I in the 60s steak? that you watched as a detective on TV, right? It's like... Uh, my name is Friday, and my partner. Oh fuck, my partner. Uh, we're going out to talk to a kid about LSD. You know, it was like you know, just the facts, crazy shit. Exactly. Just the facts. But anyway, so yeah. And yes, Dragnet was a radio program before it was a TV program and a movie. I really liked the movie. I know that's an unpopular opinion to have. The I really enjoyed the movie where yeah. he wore the fedora. Where Wait, Jack no, Webb. no, no. Old movie, Tom Hanks movie. Are you talking I'm talking about the Tom Hanks movie. Oh, no, I was the talking Tom about Hanks the Tom Hanks one was, I enjoyed it. It was funny. I'm with you. It was very funny. Dan Aykroyd? It was Come good. On. And that yeah. um, Dan Plummer, Christopher Plummer. Great yeah. actor. Yeah. Great actor. So good Christopher Plummer played the bad guy in, in the Dragnet movie and a Klingon. 
Yes, he played a Klingon as well. Undiscovered Country, he's check it out. Excellent Klingon. And he's played. Oh, and and um, and uh, somebody else in one of the in the um, one of those Ron Howard movies, the the one about the cigarettes and stuff. he always just comes up in these movies all the time. He's a great actor, very versatile. Anyway, we're getting there. Anyway, uh, so. I, I to Rosie from the chat room says, "Where's the Hawaii Five O love?" Hawaii Five O. That's right. I am that so it? not a TV <laughs> person. Really? I would have more. I have you tried Hawaii Hulu? I oh, check out Hulu. So Speaking of Hawaii things, though, can we give it up for like, Magnum PI? I am totally a Magnum child. Yeah. I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to be. It, really? But we can't help it. It's, yeah, it's the age. I think. It's just how it worked. Magnum well, PI. I think Tom that's okay. I swing both but ways. I'll to watch this Magnum day, PI. To this day, <laughs> did we ever determine for certain who, in fact, Robin Masters was? Oh, yeah, I did. Did, did the show did you ever determine say, it, or are you just no. being all? Quirky? Did the show you didn't ever hear my tell last us? comment? I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah. I did hear your last comment. I just <laughs> yeah, chose to ignore it. So not a TV person. Yeah, I watch one show on TV. What? And it is. What do you watch? Scrubs. Really? It's oh, over great show. Now. Because Scrubs is brilliant, and it's, it's not show. over. It's got one season it's, left. It's moved it to might, ABC. And, and, oh, I thought they were be one or will it. it it it's was a going, minimum of one. Yeah, it was going to end. NBC cut it off after seven, which the last season got you know cut in half because of the writers' strike. Yeah, um, darn those union people. Um, so now I have to reprogram. I, I like I like though. Scrubs. The the when I really, I you know I kind of I think series should like go really hard for a few seasons and then end. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because and but but I gotta say when I picked up Scrubs, Cammy was watching it, and it was the episode where. Colin Hay from right. from yes. uh, Men at, Men at Work. That was yes. such a great you, like, episode. Singing these yes. songs, it's like it's Colin Hay. From exactly. Men at Work. Yeah, yeah, that was. Singing yeah, Mike them. was like, oh, "What are you watching? It doesn't suck." Yeah. Well, no, it's just they like, also did an episode you know, around a little memories respect. of a sweaty girl mm-hmm. in a yeah. nightclub somewhere, and yeah. you know, it, oh, day yeah, after this. day, day after Ripping. day. Yes. We don't have that. We need yeah, to I was going to say, we can yes. almost have another... We dial up the Phil Collins if we need to. I don't, I don't think that was very <laughs> no, popular no with Phil the chat Collins, room. But yeah. I, I left, seem to remember... Yeah. I seem to... No, I think that was uh, Mark. Well, we brought that up that ran show. screaming. He we counted. brought up Scrubs and they all left? No, wow. no, 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 no. That was last week when oh, Don okay. P and I were singing. Oh. Yeah. I must yep, have yep. missed that. I wonder if I went to bed or Good something. Good for you. But day after day. Okay, I yeah. And I actually discovered that Colin Hay has like solo albums out on oh, iTunes. Oh, yes, and he does. He did some really good stuff, and I found them. that out after watching that episode. Sure. Yes, the interesting thing to me about Scrubs was that um, it was on, it, it came, I think it was like the year after Friends ended or something, and so it was Thursday nights, and they were sort of wondering, well, what the crap are we going to do right. with Thursday nights? We don't have Seinfeld and Friends anymore. So they had this super-duper hyped show called, I believe... Fuck off Miami. And it was about some stupid morning program and the guy had a crush on the girl with the hairdresser and the thing and the stuff. And I never laughed once watching that show. And then but I would leave the TV on and do other things. And there was like this odd little doctor show that came on after it. And every time I watched it, I was like, you know, I don't like this show, but every time I watched it, I laughed way more than the one that they were trying to force me to watch. Yeah. And eventually that one got cut. Thank you, Jeebus. And now Scrubs is still on doing things like bringing in Laverne's church choir to sing Payback is a Bitch. That was yeah, I, awesome. I don't know what the deal is with Scrubs because it, it Is never, Scrubs on Hulu? Probably. I don't know. It, I, don't well, know. I don't know. It was NBC. Um, hmm, weird. But it's weird. Hulu no moment It has like this giant kind of cultish following, but <laughs> if you look at like the overall Nielsen ratings, it's never really done outstandingly well. That's I mean, weird. It's just it's done okay. Really it's weird. okay. Yeah. But, I thought it was a very popular I mean, show. you look at the mm-hmm. combination of the topics and the actors. I mean, because it's got, I mean, it's got newer, younger people like you know Zach Braff. Well, but then who's it's, like seventy eight now? Well, yeah, but <laughs> I mean, he was newer and younger. He was newer and yeah. younger when day. you know he was newer and Garden younger mistake. six right. seasons, seven seasons ago. I think he's about um, you know he's old like me. Yes. Um, he's in his fifties. And sure. then, but on the other hand, you've got John C. McGinley. McKinley, you know, which yes. I mean, he's gone from platoon. He was a bob. I love him so he much. Was a bob. And he I love was a bob. Him. And yes, Office Space. I'm sorry if you do what not. What would you say? You do here. Oh, <laughs> Office Space. Yeah, that's. So to, yeah. So I just anyway. want to know. We know what your favorite TV show is. Your only TV show. You My, don't watch anything else. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna. Yeah, no, seriously. We like don't watch TV. We do the Netflix what do thing. You do? So, so you what's do your Netflix. favorite movie? If you're not a sci-fi guy, we what's need to your know favorite movie? before we are out of Strange Love Live. We need to know a little bit about the inside psyche 
of Aaron Hockley because that's what everyone wants to know. I would love to know that as well. Let and me know if you figure that out. Lost. And we want to oh. drill down into that mind of yours How to find out what your you favorite fear? TV show is, what your favorite movie is. Yeah, because these are the hard hitting questions. Exactly. Go. These are also the same kind of questions that the average like three year old would ask on an interview. But anyway, oh, exactly. Thank you. Whoa. Are you, are you going to ask me what my favorite color is next? Yes. Because, you know, <laughs> we already got the so, footwear figured out. Yeah, and that's I like my fail. Crocs. Tarosi, you were right about Scrubs. Thank you. <laughs> what did Rick say? He said Scrubs is like the moonlighting of this decade. Totally. Okay. Although I also enjoyed Moonlighting. Where like everybody's seen it and lots of people claim to have enjoyed it, but according to the ratings, it's not being watched by near as many people as maybe actually maybe say people are were having it. watching parties and there were like twenty people in each house watching the show. I'm sorry, I don't but, know. When, but when, when Moonlighting was brilliant till they did it, that's what I'm saying. And when Cammy tweets Frick I can't help but think of Dr. See, Elliot Reed. Exactly. Right. I, it, that is totally my Okay, Dr. enough Elliot about Reed. Scrubs. Okay, no, what's Aaron's favorite movie? But before we do that we might have to say, read Beals. Read Beals. It's now after twelve. Read. It's apparently his birthday. Oh, happy <gasps> birthday, Reed! Oh, happy birthday, Reed! Happy birthday to okay. you. Cha cha cha. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Beals. Happy birthday to you. You did that very well with you. On cold totally medicine. did. You cracked out, crazy woman. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Happy birthday, Reed. Happy birthday, Reed. Happy birthday, Reed. Is he like 21 now? 22? (laughs) 21 and holding. I believe he's a youngin. Happy birthday. Oh, I just, you know, I know I've seen him in bars, so I don't want to imply that he shouldn't be in them, but. (laughs) I'm just thinking he's now spending his birthday with Strange Love Live. Oh, boy. Um, He's just kicking it off. Yeah. This won't end well. Exactly. Favorite movie? Favorite movie. So overall, I'm going to go with actually Office Space. It, okay, good choice. Good, yeah, choice. good we choice. We like that. Choice. We like that. This is Much like Dilbert, you can't really appreciate it until you've lived it. Do you have the red swing line stapler? I don't have the stapler, but I do own... I do. I do own two copies. You can buy it at Costco now. I own two copies yeah. of the movie. Does that count? Because I had the original copy, and then I have the special with edition with flare. extra flair. We Oh, the flair. We only yes. have so one have, copy. But no, I, we have the one with extra flair. Yeah, but I have the red swing line stapler. Now that was that was um, that was um, uh, what's his name uh, King of the Hill and Beavis yeah Mike and uh, Mike, Mike Judge, Judge. Mike Judge. Judge. big mm-hmm. are you big Mike Judge fan I do like yes. most of what he's done you like King of the so. Hill good yeah. good King Beavis, Beavis and Butthead Beavis, 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 Beavis and Butthead you know every boy's you know inner fourteen year old huh? loves Beavis and Butthead I, I started about, watching it about, and I was like I was in rock bands and it was like oh my god yeah I remember these guys what about exactly. Spy Kids because Mike Judge was also in the Spy Kids that's right was he yeah yeah. I don't he know was, that I uh, realized that. He was, let's see, I can't remember yep. which ones he was in, but he was the one that wound up being married to Salma Hayek. Okay. Yeah. He was the Giggles dad. That's right. I would like to point out that Mad I think Mad. Office Space is a good test for people. Uh-huh. Um, if you watch the, if you sit and watch the film objectively and you find that it amuses you, then uh-huh. you're doing well. If you sit and watch the movie objectively and you find that it's a documentary about your job, you, you need probably need a new job. Thank yeah. you, Verso. I appreciate that. So other other good movies would be most of the View askew Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Kevin Smith, for those who aren't familiar so the, with what um, View yes. means. Yep, Clerks and all Do- that. Clerks. Yeah. Or Clerks was still his best movie. Clerks... Also, I don't know, Dogma. Dogma oh, would dogma. be... Dogma, Dogma. I, I like Dogma to a certain extent, although... I love Dogma. Mall rats? Uh, Matt Damon just Mall annoys rats? me, but no. anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. Clerks, George Carlin. George Carlin. George Carlin, George Carlin as a Catholic cardinal. Catholicism, wow. Catholic, yeah. And the Buddy Christ. I mean, how can you outdo the Buddy Christ? So. Yep. You, you really right. can't. Well, everybody, Dr. Normal is playing us out, and before I sneeze into Before Cami Chaos dies on the <laughs> air... We uh, have got to go. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Happy birthday, Reed. Hey, thanks a lot. And thank All you, right. Aaron Hockley. It's, well, thank you. Hockley, a Hockley photography. Hock, Hockleyphoto.com. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, studio audience. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>